All right, tonight's episode of the Ohio Cast podcast, we have a special guest and an, uh, an emerging media star in the uh, the state of Ohio, owner, operator, creator, proprietor. I don't know what a ranker, Justin Shannon for Dubstat. Justin, do you feel like that was a fair introduction of you and your uh, many skills at Dubstat? I think you gave me a little too much credit there, but I'll take it. <laughs> okay, so Dubstat, just real quick. Um, what? Where can people find Dubstat and what is Dubstat for the listener or the viewer who wants to learn about Dubstat in the state of Ohio and across the country? Sure. Uh, best place to find me is on my website, dubstat.com. And then you can follow me on Facebook. I have a Dubstat Wrestling on F- Facebook page. And then I have a Dubstat Football page that I just recently started. And then um, I'm in, on Instagram for my Dubstat Wrestling. But um, probably the best place is the website and then Facebook. Okay. That's where I post most of my stuff is to Facebook. Okay. And so, so yeah. So what, what is Dubstat? Um, had a year, an idea about, well, it's probably been a year and a half ago. Um, I saw, saw people putting computer generated rankings out there for NFL, NBA, uh, MLB, college football. And then, uh, you have Russell stat for college wrestling and they're putting computer generated rankings out there and i thought you know i think this could be done for high school wrestling and the biggest challenge is really just getting the match results data and so i reached out to um jake at at jakeswrestling.com he's got a database of wrestling results he he dumped some results out for me and i was playing around with it and figured out a way to to produce these uh computer generated rankings and then from there i just started uh started my website and it kind of took off last year and we had a lot of, a lot of people who really liked it. So I thought I'd give it a go for another year. So the big other ranking one in Ohio would be borough fan, right? Yep. And a lot of people kind of like to pit the rankings. Yours is actually computer generated and analytical, correct? Yeah. So I have, there's no opinion in it. It's, it, it's all objective. And so what it does is it takes in, match results so i i would say i probably have around 90 percent of the match results across the state of ohio the most difficult uh results to get are dual meets because they don't get posted anywhere so i do have a tool uh the form online that people can submit dual meets for and that i started to collect a lot more results there and then there's some obscure tournaments that are run by paper um are hard to get but for the most part i have most of the results it runs through uh, an algorithm that I built, and it spits out the rankings, and it's it's pretty accurate. Very accurate. Uh, when I look at it, man, I'm like, oh my gosh, this guy. And then you have, um, I believe the Burrow fan does 25, 35, sometimes 40 if it's a real deep weight. You're doing every wrestler in every division across the state of Ohio. Yeah. That's incredible, think- man. I think on average there you got about 250 kids per weight in each division. So that's about 10,000 wrestlers that get ranked. <laughs> How do you do it, man? How much of it do you have to actually hand input? The the part that took the longest was just getting it set up. So now now that I have it set up, as long as I can get the data, the match result data, there's not a lot of manual input. Um now each tournament they might put a kid in and spell his name differently or, you know, he goes by junior and, and so he gets, he gets put it. So there's a lot of matching of, of this, you know, this wrestler is the same as this wrestler, but for the most part, it's all automated. The Miller brothers from San Edward get called a different name in every tournament, right? Yeah. So, I was like, so that, but that, that's a, that's one where it's pretty easy to fix because they're so high profile and they're so yeah. good. That's one that probably you don't miss on much, right? No, yeah, I know exactly. You know, when it comes through Jr. or Gerald or, um, you know, I can I can catch those. But there's a there, in the beginning of the season, there's about four to five hundred new wrestlers that hit every week that hit hit the rankings, and that were not in that were not didn't wrestle before, and so that's really the the part that takes the longest. Um, 
but you know, it's, it takes a few hours every week to go through that and sift it out. But, um, year one was, it took some time because I was just getting used to it, trying to figure everything out. So I think I have a pretty good process now. Are we going into your third year of uh, your third season of doing it? This will be my second season. I actually have rankings out there for the 2023 season that I just produced after the fact. Got it. So this will be my second actual season where I've had them live for the whole season. Okay. Is it a ton of work on your end? If the kid's already a known wrestler, right? Now, not even like known great. We're going to be an 0 and 30 person, right? That yeah. doesn't matter. But if it's an established person who's been wrestling for three, four years, that's yeah. that's a non-issue, right? As long as they, they don't have the JR, the junior thing going on, yeah. the Tyrell thing, right? Like that, as long as they don't have the, the, the name changes weekly or whatever they're putting on the bracket in the, in the computer or whatever. Is there a ton of work for you every week as long as – is there, is there – do you just sit back and get to watch, watch traffic come in? What do you do? Yeah, if if everything – if everything's input the same, so the, the kids spell the same, you know, if he's been wrestling, he's a senior, his, his ranking will transfer from his freshman year to his sophomore year, and then he'll transfer from his sophomore year to – and so on, and it just gets pulled in every season. Um and then every week he's already in the system. We're just pulling the new results. And like I said, you know, Jake, Jake does a lot of that in his database. Yeah. Um, Jack Sedek. It, yeah. Jake. Yeah. John Jake Sedek goes by Jake. He, uh, he does a lot of that in his database. So that's, he's been super helpful. He's been, he's let me use his data. And then I pull in, I, I probably pull in another 10% of my, of extra results from dual meets and then, and tournaments that people send me that I have to format. But, you know, if everything was, if everything was systematized in the state, you know, and everybody put their, put the the same wrestlers in every week and spelled them the same, it would be pull the data and run it. And, and then you, and it produces the results. Justin, what is your background? Are you a computer engineer? Are you a, a cement mason? Are you an iron worker? Are you a teacher? What is your actual background for you to have the know-how and to build an algorithm how you did? So it's funny you actually hit three three of the four there. Um, really? I have an interest. I have an interesting background, but I was a math major, um, and originally I went. I was a math teacher for a couple of years, and then I worked for a corporation, and and that's where I learned to work with big data. What What was the corporation? If you don't mind me asking, Marathon Petroleum. Okay, so so you're in. Uh, where are you? Are you Lima? Are you Finley? Where are you? Finley. Yeah, Finley. Okay. Yep. So Lima has Petroleum. a big BP plan. I know that they've got a lot of refineries yeah. in Lima. Um, were you working in Finley? Yeah, Finley, the Marathon Petroleum headquarters are in Finley. Okay. And where Bluffton. are you from? I am from Bluffton originally, which is about 20, 20 minutes from Finley. And I went to college in Finley and stayed here. Met my wife. And okay. And what's your background in the sport of wrestling? So I've been wrestling since I was four years old. Um because I went to Bluffton High School. I was a state champion there. And then I went to wrestle at the University of Finley. Um, so I wrestled for there for four years and then qualified for um, nationals a couple times. Fell just short of All-American. So that still haunts me a little bit. <laughs> but um, Do you still have the Halo headgear? You were a Halo headgear. I, I, I was a Halo. You know, I wore that even into college until it snapped. Hey, I love, I love, I remember I love, things. I remember do, things, man. That, I was a coach at Finn or at, uh, uh, Lakota. 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 You guys yeah. We're at that uh, Lima central Catholic thing. I want to say yeah, you're yeah. in our district. You had a nail schedule in Northwest Ohio for people who don't know for listeners. Um, Northwest Ohio is the toughest in D three year in and year out. Right. Yes, it is. Um, yep. you know, the Delta is the Sandusky St. Mary's. Um, you, you just have a, a really good, um, lineage and, and the district's always really tough Addison obviously the Sandusky Bay Conference and then the NWA NWAL obviously yep. uh, Archbold Liberty Center Delta and then the Sandusky Bay Conference is obviously um tougher Absolutely. than else so you have those two conferences and then everybody else kind of ups the ante you got a line with Central Catholic over there and um Bluffton Bluffton has guys periodically though right yeah yeah. Yeah. They, they just had state champ a few years ago, DeAndre Nasser. 
He was, was a Division State one NCAA qualifier for the Cleveland State Vikings. Yep. He yep. can spot a Volkswagen. I've been told. There's a loud <laughs> yeah, announcer who says it all the time. It's me. But um, yeah, I, strong I, I, guy. I look at the trunks on that guy. Look at the tree trunks yeah. on that guy. Yeah. The interesting thing you talked about in Northwest Ohio is that you know um, with these, they're called ELO ratings. They're named after. Um, they have ELO ratings in chess. It's where the original um, kind of algorithm came from, but. With these ELO ratings, you can actually um, aggregate them into into the schools and into the districts and into the areas. You can see where the strongest areas are in the state. Um, and the interesting thing was, according to according to my rankings, the Northwest District was the toughest district in every division this year. Now, you might be surprised well, by that. Hold on, hold on. Division one. Hold on. I'm going surprised. to interrupt you. That's yes. deceptive. Because yes. you have a Cleveland team yes. that comes that is why. to Perrysburg that takes the whole team to the state tournament almost. That yes. is – hold on. So that's deceptive. You know that's deceptive. I was getting there. I was okay. getting there, Zach. I had to cut you off. I apologize. I know. I was I getting there. I started itching. I was like, you yeah. can't say that. <laughs> Most people are surprised when they hear that. So D3, you know, a lot of people would agree with that. D2, it's a little bit more spread out, but the Northwest District did, did show to be the strongest. But yeah, the Northwest District this year was the strongest in Division One because about half of the state qualifiers come from Cleveland. So you got you got Perrysburg, and then you have a host of other schools who aren't as dominant at the state tournament, but they all have two or three studs in that district. And then you bring over the Cleveland guys, and that district is just a meat grinder. I was on the phone with my boy Scotty B today, and we were talking about, it and he just he was. Scotty Burnett's the head coach at, at Parishburg, and he was just yeah. telling me how proud of the culture of his program he is and his son. Um, you know, Gray was a state champ as a freshman, probably won the toughest weight class in Division One in Ohio last year as a freshman. And he was just talking about the culture top to bottom and just how proud he is of it. But they're up against an all-time great St. Edward team, right? Yeah. Look, at, like yeah. We're looking at a St. Edward team that can break – all the Division One state records, in my opinion, champs, points, obviously 14 qualifiers. I, I think they're they're that team. They're those guys. And then you look at Perrysburg. Perrysburg's got the all-time greatest maybe high school wrestler in the United States of America ever, right? He's up there. Yeah, he's up and there. Marcus I mean, this, Blaze, but, come on, right? I mean, you know, I don't know. They're, I was reading a form the other day, and they were trying to come up with another wrestler who had beat that many national and world level guys at his age. And, you know, they would throw names out there that had, had beat one or two, but you know, blaze has beaten, he, he beaten, I don't know, maybe four or five national champions. And it's just insane. Yeah. World medalist, you know, Dayton fixes yeah. the world silver medal. Yeah. I mean, come on, man. It, it's, it's amazing to see it. And he's a Northwest Ohio guy. Yeah. Uh, dad went to Whitmer. Mom's a Fremont, you know, these Michigan people run. Yeah, man, 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 man. That's an Ohio guy. Um, It's just, Case closed. Ohio guy. They did love up an Ida for Joey and um, uh, Joey was probably a, to Joey was like sixth, seventh grade. And then they moved back down to Perrysburg. And you know what I mean? It's like the, the mom, mom's from yeah. Fremont, Lindsay, Ohio. And then we're claiming him. He's an Ohio yeah, guy. He's ours. That guy's ours. That guy's ours. He's an Ohio guy. Yeah. But yeah, it's an incredible thing to your point. Um, Jimmy Carr didn't do that. Aaron Pico didn't do yeah. that. Kerry Colat didn't do that. So the Valencia brothers, I mean, you can just, you know, Logan Steber didn't do that. Um, like you're saying, they got one or two. Yeah. Nobody has done what he did. He did it in a day. One day he did it in a day. Same. And if you look at the Olympic trials, right. Um, yeah, man. And I think, you know, Spencer Lee, when it might've been too much for him, but man, I sure would have liked to have seen it. Wouldn't you have? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, man. It, it's wild. I mean yeah yeah if i mean it wasn't if, if it wasn't for if it wasn't for Vito sitting in the finals you know the returning world champion you know blaze could be sitting on the world team right now he's pretty good <laughs> he's pretty yeah, he's all right pretty good uh so i you told me i hit three of the four i i hit teacher. oh yeah i hit um what was your teacher uh you said something about computers i'm a math computer math engineer guy. i said computer engineer yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm not an engineer, but you know, that's yeah. Ironworker bricklayer, ironworker basin. What one were you? So I actually um when I was 19 years old, I worked for a brick mason. 
And then after that, I actually I poured concrete for um, eight summers when I was when I was te when I was in college, and then when I was teaching for a couple of years, I poured concrete. Let's do a little do a little concrete. I have another business. Uh, we do some small home remodels and stuff like that. So, man, we do awesome. a little concrete and brickwork. So, what's that? What's your other? What's your contractor? What do you call? What's your contracting company? Hancock Home Services, and then okay. I have Hancock Cleaning. We have a we do small remodels and then clean offices and and uh, residential. And then is Dubstat another one then? Yeah, Dubstat. That's that's my that's my kind of pet project, and I'm trying to figure out how big it can be. Okay, so you, you tell me you're doing all these other things, right? How many staff members? How many people do you employ for the businesses that you own? So on the on the contractor side, um, I have, it's pretty small. Um, right now it's actually just me during the summer. I have, um, a guy with me full time who's a teacher. And then I have a few people who help me part time when I need them. And then on the cleaning side, we have, we probably have 10 to 12 cleaners, um, all part time. We clean, clean a lot of offices and homes. And so that's a night, that's a night or an early morning or a late night job, right? Yeah, for the offices it is usually. And do you yeah. work throughout Finley then? Yeah, Finley and kind of twenty mile radius around here. Okay. Yep. Wow. You you got a lot going on. And then and then you have a family, <laughs> not a small one. No. Five kids, so two boys, three girls. They uh they keep me young and they make me old. <laughs> uh how old is that? What are the age? What's the age range you're in? So we have oldest is freshman at Ohio State. You, Youngest. You have a yeah. freshman at Ohio <laughs> State? Yeah. Yeah, man. Is it a daughter? Boy. Oh, it's yeah, a boy. boy. Yeah, so I book in boys. And then so I have a I have three girls in between and then I have a one year old boy. Okay. Um <laughs> uh, I don't know if you know this, but it's really hard to get in Ohio into Ohio State. Where did your son go to high school? We homeschool. He's homeschooled. Okay. Yeah, it's he was homeschooled. Really hard to get in. Yeah, it's a. I mean, it's a good school. They, I guess, they had a record number of applicants this year and record number of new freshmen. They were actually putting them in hotels to begin with because they didn't have enough rooms. So, what program is he in? What What's his major? Mechanical engineering. Your kid got into the engineering school at Ohio State. Yeah. Wow, that's a commendable achievement. Yeah, he's he's, he's pretty smart. He's smarter than I am homeschooling parents dude you don't even understand that that is makes it even all that more impressive because the math and science that you need to get into mechanical to any engineering school see here's what happens with a lot of the kids at ohio state um we had a kid uh, uh he was a wrestler at kenston high school he had a four point like three gpa he got a 32 on the act they made him go to lima for a year dude what Yes. Oh yes. Goodness. Yeah. Hey, he, and it was engineering. And I was like, dude, yeah. uh, Hey, case was like, Oh no, we want you case. We want, yeah. I'm like, dude, just Great go to school. case. And he's like, no, I want to go to Ohio state. I was like, well, go to case for a year, then transfer to Ohio state. He's like, Nope, I'm going to Ohio state. Going to Ohio state. This dude lived in Lima for a year. <laughs> I, I Did you even know that Lima had an Ohio state branch campus? Yeah, I knew that. You I mean, I'm, that. I'm, yeah, you're it's right down the road from me. Yeah. He probably, uh, he probably saved some money. I, I had have thrown up in a bucket every day if I'd have had to do that. I'd have been like, wait a minute, you're going to tell me I got to go to line? No, I wouldn't have done it. I would have been like, send me to Newark. I go to Newark. Let me go yeah. to Newark. Let me go to ATI. Let me go to Worcester for a year. Lima's tough, dude. Lima's a rough it spot. Is. There's some I'm nice spots. Here. Yeah. Okay. It's... Uh, it, yeah, it's not for me. But okay. So your daughter, how old is your next daughter? Uh, so I have 11 nine and six did you have your son in college yeah so actually he's um i'm not his biological father i adopted him Got when it. he was two so gotcha so, so i adopted him i adopted him later but i i was her, his mom my wife we we started dating when he was two and i was basically his dad since then so then i adopted him after we got married okay you're not basically his dad you're his dad Yes, I'm his dad. That's how that works. <laughs> yes. uh, when they don't remember anything else, you're their dad. Yeah. Um, daughter's 11. Okay. First daughter's 11. Second daughter is? 
Nine. Next daughter. Six. Six, and then a one. Had to think about it. Yeah. And a one year old. Yeah. And you got some gaps there. You got some gaps. Yeah, there. we got two big gaps. We have two big gaps. So the good thing is our one year old has three extra moms at home, um, <laughs> that are lugging them around and helping out a lot. So it's actually it it's been a little bit easier than than the other ones. Except I'm a little bit older, so this the the um sleepless nights hit me a little harder. My grandfather Ferd was one of ten kids. He was the second youngest, and he had eight older sisters and his mom mm. and his dad Ferd died when he was two. So he had eight moms <laughs> to lug him around. <laughs> How wild is that, right, dude? <laughs> it was just him and a bunch of girls. Him and a bunch oh of sisters goodness. and a mom. Dad died. I'm sure he got plenty of attention. Oh, I, I I think he was the prince. I think the dude. Yeah. Prince, uh -huh. and then he went off to World War II, and oh, oh, you know, I couldn't wait for him to get back. But yeah, that's a kind of a wild story. But now you're, you know, you do have three daughters to help with your son. Now, okay, yeah. how do you balance all this? Okay, I saw you at the state tournament last year. Um, you were doing a little video, right? What What were you really doing at the state? Just enjoying the best seat in the house and doing a little media. Yeah, I was doing media. We were. We were just kind of taking some pictures, making some posts and and trying to get the name out there. And um, I, I was writing articles while I was down there, kind of keeping track of what was going on. Um, I put out a kind of a state tournament preview and then would track big upsets and, keep, you know, freshmen to watch, um, first round matchups to watch, just trying to keep everybody. I don't know. I just enjoy, you know, generating excitement for the sport. Um yeah, enjoy enjoying it while I was down there and and kind of posting content. Okay, I think that's. I mean, I really. I the more people we can have putting information out there and letting people see results and stuff like that, I think that's huge. Uh when you look at this, what do you see for Dubstat as far as we we know wrestling? You and I both love wrestling. You know, we're yeah. both guys that wrestled in high school, wrestled in college. Um, we love the sport. It's clear about that. Where do you want Dubstat to go from? Season two, analytical rankings, constantly knowing who's where, results, this, that, the other. Where do you want Dubstat to go? You know, I kind of, I get um, antsy when I sit still, so I'm constantly trying to think of new things. But I think, you know, for this year, I want to, I'm going into the girls' girls rankings this year. So I just put, um, I just ran through last year's results and, and got, some preseason rankings ready for the girls season. So I'm going to, I'm going to keep up on those this year. Um, but honestly, I, I want this to kind of grow into a bigger, a bigger business and maybe eventually be my main business. So I did start a subscription this year in the off season. So I'm still putting out top 25 in every weight class, um, team rankings, pound for pound, most dominant wrestler articles, bunch of content for free. Um, but the if you want to see all 250, it's a subscription now. Um, so, so yeah, we'll see how that goes this year. Um, it's kind of hard to tell. It's the off season right now, and so I think in a couple of months we'll see if that was a, a good move or not. And then honestly, if it goes well, I would I would love to to move into other states. I would love to go to Pennsylvania and Michigan and Iowa and California and some of the bigger states first. And who knows, maybe someday. I could produce national rankings. What is your pay? Uh, what's your subscriber base at this point? Where are you at? And what's, what's, what's your, what's your price point? And yeah. what service are you using to have people pay? Can they use PayPal? Yeah. It's monthly. It's a subscription. Um, can they do, are you doing a flow wrestling to them? Are you making them pay a whole year? And oh, sorry, Nope. You wanted it for a month. You got it for a year. How are you working that business end of it? So it's, it is um i have two two tiers the first tier is if you just want to look at the rankings it's $48 for the year which equates to $4 a month um now for for my rankings i can't really go monthly because um i think you know the wrestling season is what 3 months long yeah and so it it doesn't make sense to go monthly there um i think it would be you know I'd like to keep it for the year, 
it's a uh, forty eight dollars for the year. And then if you want to look at, I have, I have um basically a hall of fame I've been putting together for wrestling. So if you look out there and you Google Ohio Wrestling Hall of Fame, you'll get a list of names. And so I thought there was kind of a need there, and I started um, com uh, compiling profiles of all the kind of the greats in Ohio wrestling history. So I have that on my site. And so that is, if you grab the, if you get the premium package, you have access to all that too. What's a premium package cost? Premium package is $60 a year. I mean, you're quite to five bucks a month. I'm going to be honest with you. Your price points are fairly low with the product that you're offering, in my opinion. You think so? I don't I, know. We'll see. I, yeah. I, I'm not going to, dude, there's one thing you're going to find out about me. I ain't going to lie to you. <laughs> I ain't going to lie to you. Uh, yeah, man. I mean that, that, the, for what you're providing. Yeah. I think it's pretty good. It's pretty good. Um, yeah. and then people can do a matchup, right? They can take a wrestler. Yes. Yeah. You they can, can yeah. Take... So you can pick any two wrestlers in the state. Um, so, you know, you want to, you want to see a matchup between two guys who aren't going to see each other in the season, or maybe they're not going to see each other to the state till the state finals. And you can pick those two guys, match them up. It'll give you the probability of winning. So, It'll tell you who who's who's supposed who's favored to win and what their probability of winning is. Um, you can actually pick a, a one hundred three pounder and a heavyweight. It's not made for that, but it, but you can but you could pick somebody who's adjacent in weight classes, and it's pretty accurate there. So you can take Marcus, the season, Blaise, Marcus Blaze, and you can put him up against uh, the the Miller brothers from St. Edward. Yeah, you could, and it you know would produce a goofy result. It's really made for people in either the same weight class or adjacent weight classes. Um, once you get outside of that, it doesn't really make sense. But, um, but yeah, you could do you could do Marcus Blaze, and you could do I don't know who was who won above him last year. Um, you could do Ryan 11. Bennett versus Marcus Blaze. He was a blow. Him. You could theoretically, and so. And it was for the season that the tool was 82% accurate oh out of all the, all the, so there was about a hundred thousand matches in the database and it got 82% of those matches. Correct. That is wild. Dude. So for compare, for comparison, um, like NCAA football, if you look at Vegas odds, I think they're about 76% accurate. Now it's a little different. They're, they're, there's some competition differences and you have, you have some lopsided matchups in high school wrestling, but once you get to the state tournament, when you don't have a lot of lopsided matchups, the the tool was 78% accurate. Okay. So let's say you get your price points where you want your price points to be. You get a couple thousand subscribers and you get to a point where it's a base where it can be a sustainable business. You can support five kids. Um, and um, maybe you can kind of throttle off the other businesses maybe and make the, make this be your, your main earner, right? Once yeah. you get there, you already mentioned football. Obviously, football is the king in the state of Ohio. Football is the king in every state in the yeah. United States of America. I mean, it's the king in Alaska, man. You know, um, what would that rollout look like? And and give me a comparison to like a Joe Itell, um, which is yeah. – Joe Itell is obviously – everybody's schedule every matchup click on someone you can see their whole schedule you can see and it's like instantaneous right it's like it's more yeah. of a reporting thing it's more about reporting results right just like yours is more about getting results and people reporting the results correct yeah yeah so actually the only reason i did football this year was because of joe itell's website he has will make every single game result on his website. So I can pull all the games from there and I can run them through my algorithm. And, you know, it doesn't take, it takes maybe 5% of the time that it would take me for the wrestling ranking. So um, it was pretty simple. I thought, Hey, let's give it a try. You know, wrestling, it's off season, put them out there. Um, the difference between my rankings and Joe's rankings is Joe's are um, playoff rankings. So they're actually the it's the the number that the state goes by to see who gets into the playoffs and who gets seated. Um, so they're not necessarily meant to predict matchups. My rankings are more predictive. Um, if you look at them, you'll see teams that are five and three ranked one or two. 
Um, whereas in the AP poll, maybe they're ranked 10th. My rankings are meant to say who's the best team and who would be favored in Vegas type of thing. So you might have a guy's team that's five and three, but they lost to three out of state teams that are all nationally ranked. So it's a little bit different. Um, it's more so, you know, like I said, who would be favored? You got teams like St. Ed's. St. Ed's is close to a 500 record, but they're still ranked second in the state. So look at their schedule. <laughs> yeah, look at their schedule. I mean, they're going to make a deep run. They're going to make a deep run. Yes. Uh, look at Menor's schedule. Look at St. Edward's schedule. You tell me who's got a better yeah, schedule. Yeah, exactly. So, yeah, football. I don't know where football is going to take me. You know, it's a little bit more of a competitive landscape out there. There's other people doing computer generated rankings, both in the state and in, in the nation. Um, so I don't think it's going to be my main thing. It was, it's been kind of fun to play around with and put them out there and, and see how they do. Um, and I'll probably do them again next year. But I, I think wrestling, my passion's in wrestling. There's a need for it in wrestling. Um it's 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 never really been done before in any state that I could find um, computer generated wrestling rankings that are you know predicting matchups with with good accuracy. So I think there's a market for it out out in the not just in Ohio but really in every state. I think the degenerate gambler who likes to gamble on Ohio High School Athletic Association football. Is gonna love your football site. You keep bringing up Vegas, right? But that's what. The, hey, I'm just telling you, my yeah. buddy. I got two two of my college teammates. They're always like, "Hey, should I bet this? Should I bet that?" Dude, I don't understand any of the gobbledygook. I don't get the over under. I don't get the. I don't. I, don't yeah. understand, I understand over unders like seventy points. Are they gonna score over or under seventy points? Right. I, I okay. Yeah. I get that right, but like when they're like, ah, oh, they're minus six. Oh, that means that they're favored by six, right? What, whatever, right? Yeah, yeah. They say these things to me, and I'm like, guys, I don't, I don't know what any of that means. But they're betting stuff constantly. Constantly. I did not even realize you could bet on high school football until this year. Well, I Justin, didn't even know that was a thing. Well, Justin, there's a lot of degenerates out there. And it's legal to do whatever you want at any point. Yeah, I didn't realize and, it. And I don't know if you've noticed, but a lot of our vices that used to be big barriers are all those barriers are going down because of pretty easy, yeah, money, right? And um, you can just you grab your phone and yeah, it's an app. It's on your phone now. Yeah, yeah it's easy, right? You, yeah. you don't have to call a bookie anymore. It's not the federal the FBI ain't coming after yeah. you anymore. It's not yeah. like that anymore. And a tool like what you're talking about, those those folks are going to use that. They're, they're going to use it. Right. I mean, yeah. Well, like I mean, I'm not fighting high school kids. No, 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 no. I don't, I'm not, a, I'm not a gambler. I don't promote it I'd be but either. I don't, I, don't I, I know that, that. I know that. Yeah. I know that people will probably look at, look at the rankings and do whatever they want with them. But you know, we're in a, we're in a, a funny, funny world today. When you look at sports, people like looking at the data and statistics of events more so sometimes than actually watching the event. And so I think just the more, the more information you can get out there for any sport and especially wrestling, it's kind of, you know, wrestling is a good old, old boy sport. We've always done rankings by hand. Yeah. Um, stats are always hard to come by because everybody keeps them close to the best. You know, they don't want to, everybody know their results and um, dual meets are, dual meets aren't posted anywhere, but maybe the local newspaper, so I think the more that you can get out there and, and I'm just, you know, I, I love to promote the sport and that's why I keep, I keep 90% of my content for free out there. Um, one interesting thing I was actually playing around today. One thing I'm going to come out with this year is every wrestler is going to have a points above average. So, you know, like in baseball, they have what's called war, which is wins above replacement. Um, so wins above replacement is what if you have a player like uh, Aaron Judge, how many wins does he get your baseball team in the season compared to an average replacement? So if we just replace him with anybody we could just sign in free agency, how many more wins does he get? And it's I think he's, he has like 10 maybe more wins, which is a lot for a player. So in wrestling, uh, this new number I'm going to come out with, it's, it's points above – average so if you take the average wrestler the average wrestler in a dual meet on average would get zero points they would lose some they'd win some they might pin sometimes they'd get pinned sometimes and so 
the top wrestlers in the state, they're going to have six points above average. And, you know, if you, if you, if you average, if you're a little bit lower than that, maybe you're a top 10 or maybe a top 20 guy, maybe you have five points above average, things like that. So you can actually see, um, you know, what is each wrestler adding to your team in like a dual meet situation? It's like their impact score, essentially. Yeah, it's, it's an impact score. In football, it's called the FPI, football yeah. impact. Yeah, and it's like, it's weird when we talk about a Marcus Blaze. Marcus Blaze doesn't just mangle people. He's not this crazy yeah. painter. He's not this soup. He, he's dynamic. Don't get me wrong. But he's this methodical. He's not going to pin tech everybody this year. He's not going to do what Kyle Snyder did to people in Kyle yeah. Snyder's junior year of high school, where he only went the distance in one match. You know? Yeah. Do I don't know. I know he only went the distance in one match. How do you know that? Because I was coaching the guy from Riverside Ooh. High School, Evan Rossboro, NCAA D2 All American for Lake Erie College, who lost to him 23 to 9 in the Ironman semifinal. <laughs> yes. And you gotta <laughs> you gotta take credit for that, man. Put that hey, I have pictures of it. I'll send you a couple of pictures. That is a notch on your belt, dude. Yeah. How about Kyle? How about he pie faced Kyle Snyder one time after Kyle Snyder looks at me and he's like, Come on, man. And I'm like, I didn't tell him to do that, man. And then um that was his junior year and he tech pinned everybody. Yeah. Tech mall tech. You know, we had a kid, we had a kid score. Oh my goodness. You 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 had a kid what? Blaze Blaze has tough competition, you know. He's wrestling kids. I said Blaze has the tough competition. He's re- he's wrestling kids that are also on world teams. You know, he's wrestling. Yeah, 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 yeah. He'll have to go. Hey, we had a kid, we had a kid score. Yeah. You had a kid who did what? We had a kid score 15 points on Ethan Burden last year. Really? Sorry, I think my internet's kind of getting getting uh breaking up, but 15 points, yeah. Where at? 30 to 15. Where at? He lost 30 to 15. I, I, I don't know. Where, it was just some small tournament we went to, but uh, it uh, Highland, uh, Marengo, Marengo, also in the tournament wow. there. And he got he, got, yeah, he got. It was the finals, and he, you know, he got he got taken down fifteen times and let up, but he came off the mat and said, "Hey, you probably scored more points on than anybody else did this year against Ethan Burst. Ethan Burton's gonna be a star in college, in my opinion. He's got a freaky yeah, he is. frame. Like He's going to be a good 74-84. I, I like he him. Could, I could see him even, yeah. 97. Yeah, I, think, I could see him filling it. So 80, yeah. Yeah, he, yeah, filling out and, and going up and wait. He's so a stud. Ultimately, um, where do you see video? Do you see video? Like, dude, I don't even – I'll never even care to, to compete with you. It doesn't matter to me. You're so much more all in on this. I'm in the tail end of mine, whatever, right? Don't care. Um, yeah. Do you see ever integrating video into the to the the, the like hyperlinks to videos? I don't think so. Um, I'm not trying to compete with Zeb Miller. I it's not there's my skill no, set. There's no, I you're not yeah. hearing me. I'm like on. I have kids who play basketball. I'm on my way out. It's not my skill set, you know. Yeah. That's not where that's not where I can add value to the sport. You know, I might post during the state tournament. I'll post a couple like short videos or pictures is that I'm taking Matt's side or whatever, just cause I'm there. But for the most part, my, my skill set and the value that I can add to the sport is coming in data and analytics and, you know, just getting information out there for people to get excited about matchups, excited about going to the state tournament. Um, that's what, that's what I love is just, just seeing people talk about it and get excited and, and love the sport. I want to see the sport grow. Justin, where did you teach high school? It's not a Corey Rawson. It's this real small country school, um, just south of Finley. We had about 50 kids graduate. Rawson, Corey Rawson. Is that actually the Cor- name of the school? Cor- yeah, Corey Rawson, Mount Corey in Rawson, Ohio. Okay. You may so, have seen them at the Van Buren invite when you were coaching at Lakota. They are blue. They are green and yellow. They're hornets or That's something. That's right. That's right. Yes, sir. There you go, buddy. I know I know yeah. some pretty obscure things. Yeah. Okay. Here's my other thing. Um, I've talked to you a couple of times. I remember you in high school. If you don't mind me asking, what did you get on the ACT? What did I, I think I got like a 29. 
Okay. My son's he's my son's smarter than I am. He got a 32. Kid he's a smart 32. kid. Yeah, he's a smart kid. Being so. homeschooled, your kid got a 32. Yeah. He had a pretty good math teacher, though. <laughs> he did. He did. How hey, how long did you teach at Corey Ross? Two and a half years. That was it. I just I coached for a couple of years there and taught. And then um I I went to Marathon halfway through a year. It was uh we were we were actually both of us were working and we wanted my wife to be able to stay home and so that's when I started working for Marathon. What did you make at Corey Ross in twenty five grand? Oh I think it was you're not too far off. I want to say it was it was right around thirty maybe for first year. At uh at Lakota, at Lakota I made twenty two thousand dollars in two thousand three and two thousand four. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, I mean, I had to live in two thousand. I had to live in my parents' basement. It was miserable. Yeah, I believe it. I believe it. it takes a little while. Pretty terrible. How long have you been teaching? Uh this is my twenty second year. Okay. No, twenty twenty oh three oh four was my first year. What do you teach? I teach uh, career based intervention. Used to be when you were in high school, it was like OWA OWE. Yep. Now it's career based yeah. intervention, but I taught social studies for like 12 years. And then before that, they, uh, they made this program and I was the first person to teach it. And the only person to teach it at Riverside called, um, <clears throat> academic coaching. And it was support classes for, uh, eighth graders and ninth graders who had, uh, who needed extra support, right. They needed extra. And then we had senior matters. Dude, it was a great experience. It was amazing. That's and awesome. I kind of meandered through the district. And then uh, my superintendent came to me and was like, hey, um, you and I need to talk. And I was like, do I need to like go get somebody to defend me in a court of law? No, she's like, no, it's not that type of talk. And she's like, we've got this uh, opportunity for you to do career-based intervention. We're going to help you get back to school. I went back and I got a, a teaching endorsement online from Kent State University, who tried to get me to COVID test for online classes. Um <laughs> No, sneeze through the camera. No, yeah, I was like, "What are you gonna get a computer virus for me?" I'm confused. Um, tried to get me to come to their campus and take a COVID test to, take, to get COVID to get an on uh, online indoor. Yeah, anyhow, yeah. anyhow. Um, so I got it, and then I this is our fourth year of doing it, and we we've got kids that are getting jobs. We got kids working everywhere, and um, in Menor, in Painesville, and and in the, the surroundings, Fairport Harbor. And um, it's pretty good. Chardon, we've had kids work in Willoughby, Kirtland, and the, the Lake County, Perry, the Lake County area, Painesville Township. So, yeah, it's good. Yeah. It's good. I think we need more of that. We need more yeah, of that. Yeah, 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 yeah. There's, um, when I was teaching, when you were in high school, um, they told us, and I know we were indoctrinated with it from, from all the colleges, not just Kent State, but Every kid has to go to college. Well, yeah. as you and I both know, that's nonsense. No, yeah, it's. I have a brother who's an absolute lunatic, and he wouldn't have never made a semester of college, right? He went to a junior college and made it a semester, right? Um, the well, day, I'm in the trades now. Yeah, I'm in the trades trade. now, and I see, I see it. You know, we don't have enough. We don't have enough carpenters. We don't have enough um, plumbers and electricians. You know, they're they're just scarce now. I think it's going to be some of the, these kids going into become electricians. They're going to be making more than doctors than doctors. doctors. I mean, they're, they're going to be making a boatload of money because th there's just not enough people to do it right now. So here's what I'll tell you right now. It's a five for every five people leaving the skilled trades. They have two replacements. I don't know if you know anything about population collapse. But I, I know you know about numbers, and I know that that yeah. right there five doesn't work. Yeah. is yeah. a population collapse, and we're talking within the decade. Um, yeah. And the only I'm the only way to reverse that, the only way to reverse that, is for their pay to go up astronomically. It's going to have to, and that'll and that'll attract more people into the trade. You have to, and then, you That's know the, the only way. Thing, the biggest thing I talk about, I talk about. Uh, plumbers well they're gonna have to start paying plumbers two three hundred grand i'm just telling you this is literally what's gonna have to happen um they're not gonna be able to make the droids they're not gonna be able to make the the ai right. whatever 
no or drone i don't know whatever you want to call it um and that's that's 30 40 50 years down the road um the worst thing that happens to a plumber is they get they get somebody's poo on their shoe i tell this i say this to eighth grade students all the time the worst thing that's going to happen to you as a plumber is you're you're gonna you're yeah. gonna get human waste on you it's just yeah. a fact of the, it's that is the yeah. occupational hazard now are there some pathogens and diseases that are carried in human waste? Of course there is, right? But you're not an electrician. You're not going to, there's not the, uh, the risk of getting shocked in literally everything you do and dying no. every day. And um, it's not iron work where you're up climbing around steel, falling off. Um, basically, I, I could go through all the professions like we do. And yeah, that, that that's a pretty good job at this point. But population collapse in the trades. We're looking at a five to two. So we're going to collapse within the next 15 years. Wow. I did not know that. Yep. That's where a five yep. to placement right now. And we, we've we been doing Slump. a little micro stuff. And my uh, my brother, Ferd's an iron worker. My papa, Ferd, was an iron worker. My brother, Ferd, uh, my, my dad was an iron worker. My cousin, Jake's an iron worker. My brother, Tate's an operator. So, yeah. Yeah. If you go out in a trade nowadays and then you just go on your own, even if you're just a one-man business, you can... You can charge a lot of money. You can make a lot of money. I mean, well, plumbing is a great plumbing is a great occupation. I I really whenever I have to do plumbing, I enjoy it. It's it's not as bad as you think. You're you say you might get poop on your shoe. That that doesn't happen very often. You, you know, most of the time you're dealing with water lines and things that aren't really that gross. So, but the, the fact is, okay. So I try and give them the occupational hazard. Yeah. Like I may I ramp yeah. it up, right. Yeah. I dial it zero to six. Oh, yeah. And that is in plumbing, your worst scenario usually yep. is getting yep. human waste on you. That that you know, yep. whereas an electrician, you hit a two twenty line, you get shocked. It's over, yeah. it's over, right? Yeah. You're done. Yeah. Um, iron worker, you only get one fall usually. One good yeah. fall, then it, it it's debilitating for life. But hey, blazes. So so here, here's a great story for you about the blazes. Um, I like a little rabbit hole here. It's a good rabbit hole we're under. Okay, this is good. Um. So Joe Blaze won. It's okay. the same age as my. They're the same generation as my Papa Ferd, the guy who had nine sisters okay. that raised him. Joe Joe Blaze one is Marcus and Joey's grandfather. Great grandfather. Great grandfather. Okay. Okay. Right. So there's Joe Blaze one. He was the business agent for the local 55 iron workers in Toledo, Ohio, and then I think two counties in South East Michigan. Okay. Um. Then there's Joe Blaze too. That's Marcus's grandpa and Joey's grandpa. Okay. Business agent for my dad, Tom. They're about roughly the same age. Okay. 70 something, both of them. And then there's Joe Blaze three, who's right around the age of my cousin, Jake, and my brother, Furt. Okay. Okay. And then uh, Jake wrestled at Clay. Furt was a state, two time state champ for uh, Oak Harbor. Joe Blaze three went to Whitmer. Okay. Are you with me? Business I'm agent, with you. Business agent for the iron workers. Okay. So this runs in the in the bloodline. So we go the we're 70 plus years, 70, 80 years, we go back with the blazes. And it's we, amazing. Yeah, yeah. So and they're iron workers, but they're they figured out the business end of it. And my dad has a dude, my dad and my brother Ferd's retirement, my cousin Jake Jake's retirement. It is an unbelievable retirement. Like they don't have to worry about anything, man. Like they're hooked up and they, and they worked for that. You know what I mean? My dad did it for 50 yeah. plus years. So did my Papa Ferd. So for Papa Ferd Miller did it for 50 plus years. My dad did it for 50 plus years. And obviously retirements go into how much you put into it in your years of service, but, yeah. and they do like it's an hours. I don't quote me on all this, but you know, I'm sure somebody can pick it apart, but they have to accumulate maybe 14 1600 hours it's something like that 100 you know 14 or 1600 hours yeah. a year to get a full year of credit and then yeah my cousin jake's gonna go out in 40 at 48 <laughs> yeah. that's yeah. like a military retirement dude right i mean yeah yeah so that's pretty good yeah, i mean I you, there, there's all types of opportunities like that you know you, gotta, you know I, I just met a guy who's working on the he worked for a railroad and uh you know, he's making a couple hundred thousand a year working on the railroad. He loves Aiden it. Aiden Dodd. Aiden Dodd from Perrysburg. His dad's an engineer for, on the railroad. Yep. So, yeah, it's crazy. 
the, what you'll find about your Northeast Ohio, your Northwest Ohio guys, um, <clears throat> your wrestlers, a lot of it's blue collar parents though. Mm -hmm. It's it's blue yeah. collar parents. And then um, even too, if you look at the, the, uh, the schools now that are good, you still have a lot fair, fairly good amount of blue collar parents who do, who are in the skilled trades and, yeah. I like the skill trades. And I think if you talk to my brother Ferd, he would tell you that he saw the evolution of it from my nephew Ian. It was a lot of um you had a lot more white collar influence from Ian's er, uh, generation from my brother Ferd's generation because everybody was blue collar when Ferd okay. you know, if you wrestled you was you came from a blue collar family. Yeah. You really yeah. did you have somebody whose parents were doctors and lawyers. Did you have it? Yes, yeah. you did. That's what I love about wrestling. My, I think back to my wrestling team. And we we attracted a lot of a lot of guys who maybe didn't even really fit in in other areas in the school or in, in you know just socially. But they came to wrestling, they succeeded, they excelled. They're, you know, like I said, their parents were blue collar workers. And as you know, once you're in the wrestling, you're in a brotherhood. Yeah. And we had kids. We had we had a kid. I remember he came. He he joined wrestling straight off the couch. He played video games for the first 15 years of his life, and uh, he got in wrestling. Lost 50 pounds. Never won a match. But he joined the military, and uh, got a military job. He's doing excellent today. You know and. That's what I love about wrestling. I mean, it just it prepares you for life. I think better than any other sport in the in the world. Um, you you know, the going through the ups and the downs, and you know, you get kicked in the teeth, and you have a bad day of practice. It's a bad day of practice, and um, yeah, I mean, it just there's really no other sport like it to get you ready for life. Yeah, there's no question. Ah. Uh... My brother Tate had a buddy named Gary Grieger. Gary Grieger has a kid who wrestles like 106 and 113, one for uh Avon Lake. I think he's a district qualifier last year for Avon Lake. And that and that in that northwest Ohio district you're talking about at Perrysburg. Yeah. Um and then um he's a physical therapist now, Gary Grieger. I remember I was in eighth grade and Gary Grieger was a senior in high school. Gary Grieger went out for wrestling as a senior. That's tough. That and is tough. I'm going to tell you right now, we had a dude named Scott Dietre who was like an axe murderer. He's now like the superintendent of Cuyahoga Heights schools, right? Okay. Over here, just north of Brexville. And I know Scott Dietre and my brother Tate were not nice to Gary Grieger at wrestling practice every day. Probably a lot of felonies committed on him, right? <laughs> but, but the dude, guess what? He went right from wrestling and he sprung board right into the United States from Marine Corps. Yep. Right? And then he used that to pay for college. This guy was just like video game guy, right? Yeah. Yep. You know? And like a guy who was probably fairly soft. Look at what that guy got out of the sport. And he'll tell you that. If you talk to the guy, I'll run into him because he's got a kid that wrestles for St. Ed's and one for um, Avon Lake. And he'll, he'll tell these, you know, he's like, yeah, I, I, he wrestled and that will still periodically. And he's a great guy, right? He's an old carver guy, good guy, but I think yeah. they live like in Avon Lake and um, just a good dude. But look at what the, how that changed those two yeah. guys' lives. What was your guy's name? Yeah. My guy is Gary Grieger. What was your guy that changed his life? S S Steve Elling. His name is Steve Elling. We call him the Elinator. The Elinator? Uh, yeah. What branch? What branch was the Elinator? Marines. Marine, both Marines, right? Yeah. Marines. Yep. Yep. You got you yep. to have a nickname. And, and you know, the, the, the kind of the sad part was, Nobody really knew Steve Elling before he joined the wrestling. He joined the football team too, but nobody knew him. And then he came out for wrestling. He came out for football, and he had like this awesome personality. And you know, he just fit right in. And it was it was almost like these uh, wrestling and football. It was like the water that he just needed to 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 kind of sprout into life. And I mean, I I, I personally think it it changed the director directory of his life, but. Um, you know, it's funny. We, so I coached at Finley the last, uh, three years, Finley high school, my son wrestled there. And almost every year we have a one or two wrestlers, one or two, or two seniors come out for wrestling almost every year we do. And man, they go through practice and almost die. I mean, they, you, you can imagine 
you remember if you don't start when you're a little bit younger, you know how hard that first year is. Oh yeah. The first year just kicks your butt. You don't hardly win any matches. Practices are terrible because you can't beat anybody in practice. These kids are coming out for their senior year for wrestling. They go through the most of them go through the whole season. And you know what they say after the season? They say that was the best experience of my life. That that was like I'm a wrestler now. <laughs> like the, I, I love wrestling. Like wrestling, I, I'm a, I'm a, I'm going to be a wrestler for the rest of my life. I'm part of that brotherhood, and I think that it's kind of that. Um, you resonate, and there's a connection there when, when you see some, even though it's only for a year, it's like man, you went through, you went through the grind like I went through the grind. There's some respect respect there. Yeah. Well, I was telling you about a guy who I owe an apology to, Kyle Klotz. Let me tell you how tough Kyle Klotz is. Let me tell you how tough Kyle Klotz is. So they must have been doing a Lakota thing, a Kansas, Burgoon, Rising Sun thing, uh, tradition, you know, handed down generation to generation. They would get a stop sign and they'd jump up on it and they'd, they'd hang, you know, it's a, was a, sign, a stop sign in the octagon, I believe, right? Yeah. And they would hang on the top of it. And then what would happen to the sign is it would fold in half. Okay. Well, Kyle must have not been heavy enough to fold this one in half. He's up on it. He's hanging on it. Out on the country roads of Bragoon, Rising Sun, Kansas. I don't even know there's more. There's, I, I can't even think of all the towns that are around there. Frost area. Hanging and he lets go. He lets go and he's got his clash ring on. And he hangs up there. He hangs up there. And he's stuck up there. He reaches up with his other hand, pulls himself up, pulls his hand up. It tore up his it tore oh. up his finger. Let me tell you what this looked like when he came oh. into lifting that Monday. He had to go to the emergency room and they took, you know, the saw they used to cut your uh cast yeah. off. Yeah. They used that saw. To cat cut his clash ring off. So where know this story. all where did all of the debris go in the cut? Have you ever put a hot dog in the microwave? <laughs> That's what it looked like. Dude, it's what it looked like. His finger was three times the size of the other fingers. Dude, I think he is. Him and Eckleberry are married to the sisters. I taught the yeah. sisters. Yes. Sister, yeah, they're, right? yeah. 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 I taught, I taught the, uh, yeah. Okay. So, yeah. So, yeah. Landon Eckleberry is the, yeah. Stud. Starting quarterback. Yeah. Yeah. Stud. Future the, SEC yeah. Big Ten quarterback. Yeah. Yeah. State champ in wrestling, too. Yeah. State runner up, state champ. Really good. Anyhow, his dad had the state record in the discus, Corey. Um, anyhow, this guy, comes in Monday morning and starts lifting and grabbing all the grubby, gritty weights. And I'm like, dude, I'm like, dude, you, you gotta leave. I'm like, you, and I was, I do all the lifting with him and run on a treadmill. And I was like, you can't be here. I'm like, you cannot be here. And then the other thing I owe him an apology for was all he wanted to do is a Peterson roll. Yeah. So one tournament, it was like the SLL duels at like, Gibsonburg or something. I don't know wherever it was. I was yelling to the other people. I'm like, yeah, he's just going to let you take him down and do a Peterson roll. My assistant coach, Ryan Turbin's like, hey, man, that's messed up. And in hindsight, that's obviously very messed up to yell out what yeah. you're, what everybody knew, right? And I was like, I was so fed up with him just what doing Peters. Peters. Dude, he would get taken down and then just Peterson roll people. He would hit the Peterson he won 25 matches. The guy won 25 yeah. matches with a Peterson roll. And I just wanted him to get better at other things. But it's like, dude, you came in. You're a young 23-year-old guy. What's this guy really going to learn from you in six, eight months? You know, five, yeah. six. Yeah, yeah. Like, I'll tell so you he, what. He was tough. <laughs> yeah. What's He's the tough. engineer now, isn't he? He he does recruiting. He recruits. Oh, he's like, like a headhunter. Headhunter, high level executive type people. Love him. Fabulous. His son, Every time I see him, great dude. His son Keegan is a senior this year. He's he'll be okay. wrestling probably 175. He's been he's been a district placer a couple of times. Really? Um, yeah. Yeah. He placed as a freshman and then he placed he got sixth twice, freshman year and then his junior year. He's tough. Hey, 
Are you gonna He's look at tough. the finger now? Are you gonna look at the finger now? I'm gonna, gonna ask him about the finger? the finger. Yeah, I gotta Dude, ask him about the finger. Yeah, it split like a hot dog. And then they used a bone saw. So, so all the like metal shavings just yes, went right. They in. went in it and then it got infected. I grabbed that up, man. I'm like, dude, oh you, can't, you don't need to be here. Stop with the and dude. He, he showed up mm-hmm. and he was like <laughs> serious about it. And you know what? That dude had a, he had a tough, uh, it was like a tough, I think it was kind of a tough upbringing for him. And he was tough and commendable. We had a kid named Jimmy Schultz. We had Tony Brown, mm-hmm. the Weller, Weller brothers, Matt and Tim Weller. Tim Weller is my neighbor. Tim Weller lives in freaking Auburn Township, two miles down the road by the wrestling coach here. I mean, you coached him. I did not coach Tim. I coached Matt, the younger brother. Gotcha. Tim lives too well for me and works at Nestle. I I tell you what, Lakota's got a good team now. They've been, they've really built that team up. Yeah, they're going to get a chance here. I hope. I hope they do. I love what they do. I like Aaron. I like the Bombers. Bombers a good guy. He coached my nephew Ian. Can't say enough good things about the Timmonses and the Bombers and yeah. Um, what's his name? Quint- um, Braxton Quaintance is the Quaintance is a stud. I mean, yeah. Um, a that's a tough finish for Quaintance in the state finals, though. Losing on yeah, a, a legal. That was a tough. That, that, I think that was going to be a close match, and he was yeah. he was riding tough and just. I I don't think it was intentional. He tried to return him pretty hard and. No, and I think that I don't Addison, know if Addison guy had no idea what was going on either. Do you realize? No, I that? think he might have tried to Granby or did something. And he just yeah, but he tried. To, he tried to get up and wrestle, and I think he thought he lost. Oh yeah, you understand? I think the dude like I want to wrestle, and it's like no man, yeah. your ball is wrong. I think old. it's that's tough for both guys, you know. Yeah, I absolutely. mean it's tough for Queens to lose that way, and it's it's tough for Orbath to win to win that way. You know, yeah. I mean he probably didn't want to win that way. What are you looking? But he was definitely. What are you looking forward to most coming up? Right. What what is like we're talking about these things, right? We're talking about Quaintance. Yeah, yeah. can it, can he win a title for Lakota? Yeah. We're talking about Marcus Blaze. We talk about Gray Burnett. We yeah. talk about, you know, all these different things. St. Edward. We talk about the Miller brothers. Yeah. What what excites you most for this season coming up? We talk about for this Spots, this kid's a senior, right? Like we're talking about oh, all yeah. these different things. What excites you the most for the 24, 25 season? I mean, I, I just love wrestling. I mean, I, I just love it. And uh, I think there's a lot of exciting things. Div- Division one is, is exciting. You got you got Eds, and they're probably going to be in line or at least close to, to breaking their own scoring record again. They got close last year. Then you got Perry. I mean, Perry's got a historic team, an absolute historic team that would – Win state many many years in the past, but I, I don't know if they can get past Eds. I mean, I think it would be awesome if we had a close team race. Perrysburg comes in every year and gets they've gotten runner up in the last what three or four years, and uh, they always have five or six studs. I mean, they have an awesome team too, but they don't have the depth that Eds and Perry have. But they always have they always have studs that just score big and show up at the state tournament. I want to see Marcus Blaze, you know, come out and win his fourth title. I think he, like we talked about, I think he is the best wrestler, definitely probably from Ohio, high school wrestler from Ohio ever. And that's saying a lot. I mean, you look at, you got Alan Freed, you know, I mean, he was a freak in high school. He was beating, at the time, he was beating NCAA All-Americans. I think he might have been, be, uh, he took down John Smith two or three times in, in, a, in a freestyle match. But even Alan Freed didn't didn't knock off the guys that Marcus Blaze knocked off. Logan Steber. Yeah. Logan Steber. Steber. I mean, I think Steber knocked off an NCAA champ or did. somebody of he that did. high caliber, but not four or five of them. No, um, no, he didn't do that. Yeah. So, so you have these. You know, you got David Taylor. You got yeah, Steber. You know, Lee Kemp was a freak in high school, but he didn't really bloom completely until um, until college. But. Um, you know, you have all these these guys. Who Tom come Milkovich from, never lost. Tom Milkovich never lost. I mean, he I think he went undefeated in the Big Ten in college too. The guy he he, yeah. he almost won the NCAA title with one arm. Yeah, um, he did. He told me the story. Was yeah, the finals. So Three. you have all these. I mean, if you look at Ohio's history and all the just just the the great wrestlers in history, I think you got the best one right here, Marcus Blaze. Like you said, he may be, he might be the best high school wrestler period ever um 
he has taken a couple of losses, but if you look at who he's beat, there's nobody that really has that type of resume. You realize I think it's interesting he's avenged both the, okay, so he's avenged yeah, both he's losses. Avenged him. He beat yeah. uh Leo DeLuca the next day, right? Within yeah. taking twenty four hours to have to avenge that one. And then he had to wait a little bit longer against Davino and he, he dominated Davino in the final of the yeah. twenty three. Yeah. So yeah, I mean, yeah. He lost in a ride out. I mean Yes. Yeah. So yeah, you got, I think inter, what's really interesting is this year is we finally have a team race at the state tournament in Division Two. Yeah, and the for the past twenty, I think it's twenty four years, Graham's you know dominated the dominated Division Two landscape. They moved down to D three, D two. You're left with you got Watterson, uh, Bishop Watterson. You have you know Buckeye lost quite a bit. They were they were tough they're still going to be up top five probably but you got Watterson, you got DeSales and a couple other teams that are going to compete I think I'm, I'm excited to see who comes out on top there I I really think Watterson is building building a, a little like dynasty there and in, in uh, Columbus and then in D3 you know I thought this was going to be Delta's year you know every 10 years they won a state title and I thought they were going to do it again this year they're probably the big favorites Graham moves down to D3 and I, I just don't see – I think Delta is going to be super strong, but I don't see him knocking off Graham at the state tournament. So we have a, a bit of a different year in the, in the Division Two and Division Three. I'm excited to see how that shakes out. It's just going to be a change. Like, you're, to your point, it's going to just be different. Yeah. It's going to uh, be different. I welcome, that. I welcome that. I'm good with that. And then, yeah. uh, dude, Graham's got some studs. Graham's got some studs. I got a guy going for four Tucker. Titles. Yeah. Yeah, Brogan Tucker going for four titles. Be I think he's knocked off uh, – who did he just knock off? It was uh, Zakis. Yeah, he's pretty good. He beat. He beat. Uh, it was down. Ten, he beat him eleven ten. Yeah, Crazy. yeah. He was down big. Came back good. and beat him. He's so good. he's real good. And he's gonna be he's, an NCAA guy. So he's gonna be real good. They're gonna reload. You know, they're gonna have a bunch of freshmen coming in. Watterson's got some tough freshmen coming in. We're gonna see little little Rollins, little Tommy yeah. Rollins come yeah. into high school. Yeah. So I'm excited. That's an exciting year. Good yeah. Year. Um. You got anything else for me? You got any good stories? Anything else? <laughs> you caught me off guard there. No, I don't think I – sometime we'll have about uh, Sean Nelson stories. I had really Sean good. Nelson on – listen, how many felonies has Sean Nelson committed, committed against you, roughly, just off the top of your head? Oh, my goodness. You know, I I can't – the first time I ever wrestled, I think of me, man, I'm about 50 pounds. I was more than this having this guy. And he just mauled me. He mauled me. He got on top of you. And I, I it, he's a freak of nature. I I he got third position. What did he, he just dominate? He, you know, what did he get you he in? He would just do things that, every position. Every position. I freak. got it was a little more evenly matched the older I got, you know, I was getting junior and senior year. My cut now. Did I lose you? Yeah, he lost me a little nope. bit. Yeah, what did he do? What did he do to you? I missed that the Sean Nelson bit there. Can you hear me? Yeah, I got you a little bit. You're just choppy. When I first got there as a freshman, so did, yeah, Nelson. Dom, my freshman year, I got I got just absolutely mauled by Nelson. I got mauled by Bubba Taylor. Neither of them had any mercy. And uh, I, the funniest thing I ever saw Nelson do in a in the practice room was when he was wrestling our three hundred pound heavyweight, and I saw him double leg him in the air, picked him up off the ground, double legged him. And was running across the mat with him in the air, and just slammed him right on his back. What a freak! <laughs> like, I was, what a freak, he's a dude! Freak. Yeah, he's he. I love Nel. I love Coach Nelson, Bubba Taylor. Bubba I, was a freak too, man. I think you could get Sean now. I think, think he just got the, the the knees replaced or the hips. I forget yeah. what. Yeah, I I could I could get him more often than not my senior year. Which, yeah. I mean, he's he weighs 140, 150 pounds. So, I was I was weighing about 190. So I should be able to get him. Were you a 65 or a 57? What were you? I was 65. Uh, 
And then my senior year, I went 74. Did you lose in the blood run? Yes. Thank you. Not, for to, br not to bring up, not to be. Yeah, you know, I, I still have dreams about that, and I thought I forgot about it, but thank you, Zip. Justin, I just want to bring it up. So, so I know you're a super smart guy. The flux capacitor is not real, and we cannot go back in time and change it. Hey, yeah. hey, if it makes you feel any better, I'm the only person in my family that wasn't a state so, champion in wrestling. Let me tell you, let me tell you the, my worst wrestling memory. And it was my last one. My senior year, I think I was ranked third or fourth in the nation. Regionals. I lost. I was wrestled a kid I'd beat earlier. He um he um Merkel's me. Merkel. Okay. Puts me on my back. And the Conties. First round Conties. I wrestled another kid. Who, you know, I would beat nine times out of ten, or even more than that. Um, so I'm beating him. I, I'm on bottom. I stand up, and he three quarter Nelsons me. He hits me in a standing three quarter Nelson, pins me, and that's how my wrestling career ended. That was your senior year. That was my senior year. That's how that's how my wrestling career ended. And so, you know, it took a long time to forget about that, Zeb. But now we're bringing it up. No. I thought we were talking about the round of 12 at the NCAA tournament. No, so my that was my sophomore and junior year. Those those don't hurt as bad. <laughs> really? You no, know, they don't. You know, they don't. Who beat you in the I blood mean, they run? hurt, but... Where was the guy from who beat you in the blood run? Uh, my first year, he was from Wisconsin Parkside. He was, he was good. He ended up getting fourth. And then, uh, so my yeah, that was my sophomore year. I I drew I, I drew the returning national champ first round, lost to him three to two. Then I got in the blood round, and I got the kid. He ended up fourth. And then, um, junior year, I lost in uh, double overtime in the blood round. Can't remember where that kid was from. I went to the D two tournament last year in Kansas, and uh, we. We we had a good time. My nephew won in the blood round against the defending, the returning third placer. I watched that match. Yeah, I watched good. that match. It was sweet. Um, I think I probably watched it on your channel. I was pretty excited. I don't know if you – Yeah. No, I was very excited. And um, he comes back this year. I, I don't know where he's at right now and, you know, mentally. But I know physically he was 220 pounds when I saw him two weeks ago, and he looked pretty scary. What weight? 97. 97. It's going to be a good size 97. <laughs> that's good. I'm pretty yeah. excited for him. And he's got two years left if he wants to take it. So uh, that's awesome. Where did well, he wrestle in high school? He's Oak Harbor. He was an Oak Harbor. Right, Oak Harbor. All Oak Harbor. Yeah, every, uh, well, my kids are Kenston and they play basketball. Yeah. Kenston, They're bombers. Yeah. They're bombers. But so, so I've been uploading the last few. I'm, I'm trying to get all the breaking reports on my site. And, um, get them in a nice text format, get them out of the PDFs. But anyway, I was going through the nineties and it was like, I think eighties and nineties. It was like Oak Harbor Miller, Oak Harbor yeah. Miller. A lot of those. Oak Harbor Miller. I mean, just tons of Millers in there. Yes. So two nephews, Ian and Wyatt are both state champions. And then three of my brothers, uh, for Chad Tater state champions. And then, Luckily, I have my nephew Owen to join the club with me. He was fourth as a senior, um, and then he was fourth in track too. He was fourth in the four hundred, and uh, oh, wow. he, placed, he placed in two relays: the four by two and the four by eight, four by four and the four by two. And now he runs against yeah, Bodie. Bodie is still... a junior, yeah. But Bo Bodie won the district last year, and he was like seventh in the region on the eight hundred. So okay. they're fast. They're fast. Good at wrestling what say it again fifth he did not place last what did Bodie get in wrestling he did not play he plays the state he didn't they, oh, he didn't place. they okay. were 10th in the four by four i think i watched some where he beat alex dankins gotcha yeah yeah yeah, yeah. he beat alex dankins on a last last second yeah that was a good match that was a good match. he just wrestles hard but Bodie's in good shape and he wrestles hard so we'll see yeah. He won 26 this year, and we'll see how he does. But um, you got anything else for him, or are we good? I think we're good, man. 
I love it. I love to hear it. I love to hear you talk about these things. I love to hear where uh, Dubstat is going. Where can we find Dubstat for all the people who are uh, curious about Dubstat? So website is dubstat.com, or if you just Google Dubstat, I'll be the first one to pop up, and then follow me on Facebook, Dubstat Wrestling, and Instagram, Dubstat Wrestling. All right, Justin. So dubstat.com, out on Facebook. And you can Google Dubstat and you can find it that way too, right? Justin. Justin, thanks for coming on tonight, man. I appreciate you and we will check you out at dubstat.com.